reality of the situation is, is the mayor has not one time come out and said, we can't take them anymore. Because they're scared of the Republicans using the PR against them. We have to be honest, this is human capital we're talking about. This is human life. This is a five-year-old boy, a human that just died in these conditions. We have to be honest and say, we cannot take anymore. Same thing all the cities have done. They put them on buses. Colorado put them on buses and sent them to other cities. We need to do the same. We cannot keep accepting thousands of migrants and then having them, housing them in warehouses when they're getting sick and they're dying. Let's be honest and say, we can't take anymore. Governor Abbott, we can't take anymore. We have to bus them to other cities that can probably take them, but Chicago cannot afford this crisis. And the only thing that's happening is that the, the contractors that were contracting are getting rich. They are making millions and millions of dollars. We spent up until a billion dollars in favor staffing and Garter World and all of these contractors are making tens of millions of dollars per week to house migrants in deplorable conditions when they already came from deplorable conditions in Venezuela. That makes no sense. The city needs to end and put a cap on the migrant crisis today. And the governor and the federal agency. migrant arrivals has overwhelmed border patrol agents in the most rugged sectors of the U.S.-Mexico border. The agency apprehended nearly 10,000 migrants in the past 24 hours, according to internal federal data obtained by CBS News. Well, that's up from a daily average of 6,000 in October. CBS News immigration and politics reporter Camilo Montoyo Galvez has been speaking to migrants and volunteers in a remote desert area near Lukeville, Arizona. I've been working in this sector of the border for um, almost 20 years, and we've never seen anything like this. So for some reason that only they know, the cartels are bringing them to, to this sector. And they're, they're um, accessing the U.S. through a multiple um, ways. They're actually cutting through the wall, or they're going so far um, west that they're actually no great wall to, to stop them. And they're coming from across the globe. Oh my, all over Africa. Um, we've got folks from um, Central America, uh, Brazil, Ecuador. So we've got lots of folks from all over. And Cam Camilo joins us now from there in Lukeville. Uh, Camilo, you've been there with the migrants since the early morning hours. What have you seen? What's going on? Hi, Lana. The situation here inside the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument really does vividly illustrate the dire humanitarian crisis here along the U.S.-Mexico border. When we arrived here in the early morning hours before 7 a.m. local time, we saw hundreds and hundreds of migrant men and families huddling around campfires or sleeping next to the border wall. Mexico is just a few feet away from us. And they are here because they are waiting to be processed by Border Patrol, which right now is overwhelmed because of that influx in illegal crossings that you referenced earlier. They are waiting here so long, Lana, that there are Mexican families across the wall right there selling them food and coffee. And some of these migrants are having to relieve themselves here near cacti because there are no restrooms here, Lana. This really is a dire humanitarian emergency, and it really, again, illustrates the challenges that the Biden administration is facing here along the U.S.-Mexico border. So, Camilla, what is the federal government doing now to deal with that situation? Well, the Department of Homeland Security, Lana, recently closed the local port of entry to commercial 
and pedestrian traffic, and it has done so to divert officers and agents to process migrants here who are crossing into this part of the border. They are also ramping up deportation flights to countries like Senegal and Mauritania. Many of these migrants behind me are from Africa. They are from these countries that I just named, but also Morocco and Guinea. They're also from countries in Asia like Nepal and India. We have met migrants from across the globe. This is a global challenge that the Biden administration is facing. So they are taking some steps, Lana, but the truth of the matter is, Lana, that this situation here will not significantly improve, I believe, until Border Patrol receives more resources and manpower to handle the influx of migrants here, and unless Congress updates the outdated and understaffed immigration system. We have said this repeatedly, Lana, but Congress has not updated the system since the late 1990s, and the country and these migration patterns have changed dramatically since then. And we saw you speaking with a volunteer. Tell us about the role of volunteers there. Are there enough? What are the needs? Well, look, Lana, this is one of the most rugged, remote sections of the U.S.-Mexico border. This is a national monument. It is a desert. The closest town has a few dozen residents. And so volunteers here are critical. The work that they do here is critical because they are the ones who are distributing food and water to migrants for free. They're not selling it. This is free. And they are trying to prevent migrants from perishing here along the U.S.-Mexico border. Fiscal year 2022, Lana, actually saw the highest number of migrants dying trying to cross the U.S.-Mexico border. More than 800 migrants died that fiscal year. So the volunteers here are trying to prevent that, Lana. All right. Camilo Montero-Gavez, thank you.